Frequency separation. Created an action for it today that you can download in the link below. Let's see how it works. It's been raining all day today, so I thought I'd come up and create a frequency separation action that you can download below. And in this video, I'm going to show you how it works and how to apply it. Enjoy. Okay, before we run the action, what we need to do is clean up the image. And as you'll see on the screen here, I have two layers before clean up and then the background. The background is what was left after I cleaned up the image. So I'll flick these on and off just to let you see. So that's the before clean up on. And you can see there's freckles down here. There's a couple of blemishes in here in the skin. Very little, mind you, but there's a couple there that I don't want to have to deal with later. So I've cleaned them up. Right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete that before clean up layer. Then I'm going to get into my actions panel and I'm going to select the frequency separation and I'm going to hit play. On the blur layer, the Gaussian blur will appear. My radius is set at 6 and the reason for that is that's the final setting that I like. You play around with these until you get one where the skin blemishes just disappear and no more. I'm going to go for six with mine. The next part of the action that runs is the high pass layer and we'll deal with that later. Currently it's named paint white 70%. Again mine's as I've run this action before mine's was preset at 2.9. Again you can change that. Click OK. And you'll see that the high pass paint white 70% has dropped into a sharpen eyes group and which I'm going to turn off just now. Right, next in the frequency separation panel, panel, group, we have a subtract, subtract <laughs> and a blur. The subtract layer contains the skin texture. The blur is just the image with the skin that we blurred at six, radius of six. So what we're going to do now is we're going to work in the blur layer. And how we're going to do that, and the reason we're going to do that, is so that we can even out some of the skin that's left there. Right, what I'm going to use to do this is I'm going to use the lasso tool. Before I start, you'll notice my feathering for this was set at 42 pixels. Again, because I'd ran through the action, that was the best one for me. You set whatever's going to work best for your image. And what I'm going to do is draw an areas. Right, if I hit the Q button twice, there we go. That's the feathering there that's set at 42. That means it's going to blend into the surrounding area just nice and softly. It's not going to have a hard edge. Right, and then I'm going to go filter, blur, Gaussian blur, six. And I'm going to take this up a bit. I'll take it quite extreme. You should see that change on your screen. And I'm just looking to even out all the skin tones. I'm going to click OK there. Normally, you would change the blur for each one, but just for the speed of this tutorial, I am going to run through all of these at the same, except for a couple of areas. Right. And I'm going to go down here. You'll notice I'm not taking in too much of this either. Again, that helps with the blending process. What I will do is I will jump down here and I'll just go filter Gaussian Blur. I don't have a shortcut set up for Gaussian Blur but if you're going to use it all the time I do suggest you set one up. And I'll take a wee bit out the chin here but now I'm going to zoom in a wee bit just to let you see. I'm going to turn down the Gaussian Blur now for this area because I want to keep some of the details. See how it went quite flat there. I'm going to take this right back to see about 6.2 and click OK. Now I'm going to deal with the highlights here. I want to keep the highlights, I don't want to flatten them or blur them too much. Filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Right, if I take it right back, that's how it is just now. I'm going to take it in if I go too extreme, that happens, and I don't want that. So I'm going to go roughly about five. 
put on deadlock and you take it down the nose there. And again, I was quite happy with that five, so I'm going to take that there. Hardly a difference, that's good. And in the nose filter, I'm going to adjust this one again, Gaussian Blur. I'm going to take this up a tiny bit. I've got preview clips so you can see exactly what's happening. If I go like that, it just flattens our nose. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm going to take it to about there. And again, just round the eyes here. I'm going to go filter Gaussian Blur. And that's softened that enough for me. As you do it though, each time you do it, you should be looking in to soften the skin and also keep the detail there as well. Don't flatten out the skin too much. Uh, I'm going to go in and draw just under here. Again, we need to keep some depth as well. And filter, blur, Gaussian blur. If I take it too far, that happens. I'll maybe leave it just a bit there for this tutorial, just to let you see it. Take it round there, filter, Gaussian blur, because it was already set. The last time I used blur in here, it keeps it in the cache, so that the next time I press it, it's the same one. Again, what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave here. Right, I'm going to zoom out, because it's always good to see the entire image. Deselect there, and I'm going to adjust the neck. Again, not taking in too much of an area, we'll have the neck at this point. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And that, as you can see, is way too much. So I'm going to take that down because we need to leave some tonality in here. Okay, I'm then going to take it around here. And I'll just be quick with this filter Gaussian blur. Again, I'm going to leave that area, I think. Deselect. Zooming back out, I'm going to take in the arms. And you, when you're doing this, please take your time when you're doing it. As you can see, I'm just going really quick. I've even caught some of the background there. Filter, Gaussian Blur. That'll do for that. And then in here. Filter, Gaussian Blur. Right, I'm going to deselect. What I'm going to do is I'm going to let you see the before and after, and just so that we can see what we need to change. And there's a couple of areas in here that I'm going to redo. So I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to take a little bit more out of this. Right, filter, blur, Gaussian blur. If I take that too much, it flattens our nose. So you must leave some of the skin tones there as well. I'm going to go for 41. And in here, Delta Gaussian Blur 41, deselect, I'll zoom out. Right, we may have flattened our nose just that wee bit too much, but let's see. Maybe not. What I'll do is I'll leave it at that for the purpose of this. Right, next. This is a skin texture layer. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you, there's hardly any blemishes on here at all, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you, in fact I'll just go for that one there, which you wouldn't even call a blemish, but I'm going to remove that and I'm going to show you how to remove it. Sometimes you'll have missed wee areas and you could look around, ah there's one there, just a couple of hairs, and these are on the skin texture layers because of the, they've taken the difference from them, so the texture's still here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the clone stamp tool, Make sure current layer is selected. Don't choose any of the others. Current layer. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my source, which is there, and then I'm going to paint over that. Just very, very gently. So you can see that it's removing it by copying texture from another layer. I'll go in and I'll take out something that doesn't even need to be taken out just to show you this. There. And let's take out that one just so that you can see this actually working. Increase my brush size. Right, so there we have it. I'm going to zoom back out. Last but not least, and we can close this frequency separation down. Last but not least is the sharpen eyes. 
and I've just named it Sharpen Eyes. It's for sharpening any part of the image at all. But as you'll see, it's already created a black mask, which is a hide all mask. And now I've selected that. If you can see this grey, this grey rectangle, if you can see this white rectangle surrounding it, make sure that's selected. Go to your brush. And it says here that the instructions on this for you are painted 70%. Okay, you can change that, but it's just, it seems to be the best for me. It's how I work, it's, it helps with my workflow. So I've taken a brush, soft round brush, as you see, soft round brush, and the paint color is white. My opacity is at 70%, and I'm gonna zoom in a wee bit so that you can see this. And I'm gonna take the brush size down. So I'm gonna paint once across here. And by this, you should see the eyes sharpening up. This is my preferred method of sharpening and sharpening eyes. There is many, many ways to do it. I'm only showing you my workflow and how I prefer to do it. The other things as well, one nostril, one nostril, because these are the features, as I've said before. And the lips, I'm going to leave these at 70, actually I'm not, I'm going to step them back and I'm going to take these down to about 46. Yep, that's better. I don't want too much definition in the lips, but I still want them to stand out from the rest. And last but not least, 46, I'm going to take that back up to 70. There we go. I'm going to sharpen the areas of the hair that are in focus. It's not worth sharpening the bits that are out of focus. I'm just going to sharpen the bits of hair that are in focus. Just to pronounce them a wee bit better. Make them more pronounced, sorry. Not pronounce them a wee bit better. I'll zoom out even more and I've taken some of the dress as well. So. I use a tablet to do this. So I find the Wacom tablets really, really handy. So that's the reason perhaps the speed is coming through with this. Uh, I'm going to zoom that back in and what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off all the layers to let you see the before and after. So there's the before and there's the after. Before and after. The skin doesn't look too plasticky. It's overemphasized here a wee bit just to show you how it works. But at the same time, you have the option of going in and adjusting the opacity of your layers. So you could take it right back, or I can take it just to there. For the purpose of this, I'm gonna leave it at 100%. And that's just a quick method for frequency separation. The action will be in the link below, as I've said, and it includes a sharpening of the eyes but you can use that sharpen to sharpen anything. Hopefully you managed to get a couple of things from that and hopefully you enjoyed the tutorial. I haven't been able to post each week recently due to workload, which is a good thing, but what I have been doing is I've been out with the drone and you can check out a couple of videos here and here and you can let me know in the comments below what you think of them or even better, comment in underneath the videos themselves. If you've enjoyed this video and you're not already a subscriber, please hit subscribe below and always a big thumbs up, that really, really helps. And once again, thanks for watching. <laughs>